I'd like to call the regularly scheduled planning commission of October 23rd to order. Uh, please allow a record note that all of us are present. And tonight, Commissioner Fuentes will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me as we remember our great freedoms of this nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, that leads us up to the public comments section of tonight's meeting. I don't think we have any speakers cards, but I'll uh, see if anyone from the public wants to talk at this time. And seeing none, let's go to presentation item number one. Our first uh, item this evening is code enforcement activity report, and Lou Kirk is here with a brief report. Good evening, Chair Hamilton and members of the Commission. Uh, this is a third quarter activity report for uh, 2014. And uh, very briefly, we added 172 new cases to our uh, carryover 166 cases during the third quarter and closed 119 during the same period, leaving 219 active cases as we moved into the fourth quarter. I know you've looked at all of the, uh, the uh, graphics that I've provided you. And at this point in time, I'd be happy just to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions? Just one very quick one. Um, the 14% increase in public nuisance cases seems like a much bigger jump than normal. Is there some sort of background as to what, what might be causing that? The largest one I can think of is just a seasonal uh, variation that we see. Um, the third quarter is um, you know, coming off of the warmest part of the year. People tend to have their windows open, spend more time outside, so they see and smell and hear more things. Uh, the grass grows, the pools get green. All of those property maintenance things just crop up. So we tend to see a little more during this time of year and then just the opposite in the colder months. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next presentation is from the Public Works Department, their quarterly report. And Angel Fuertes is here with an exciting presentation this evening. Um, good evening, Chairman Hamilton and members of the Planning Commission. The quarterly update uh, for July to September is in your binder. And if you don't have any questions, I would like to brief you on the Lake Forest Sports Park. This is how the sports park looked last week. As you can see, uh, most of the construction is done except for the field that's on the top. Um, you're currently looking south right now at the top, which is what we call the uh, multi-use fields. So in, in a week, the park will be ready for the VIP preview on October 30th. And in nine days, they'll be ready for the public opening November 1st. Oops. Uh, what's not completed, and it will be done within the next uh, nine days, is the asphalt, pull, um, asphalt paving, the parking lots, and the roadways in the interior of the park. The mulch uh, is beginning to sp spread throughout the uh, park site. And that, like I said, the multi-use fields, which is going to be soccer fields. And we are currently installing security cameras, Wi-Fi throughout the site. And the building still has to be inspected for fire and in order to get our certificate of occupancy. The uh, recreation building and the clubhouse buildings, the structures, they've been completed since June. And it's just ready for inspection. Um, this is the beautiful gymnasium. As you can see, we've got a partition in between the uh, in between the basketball courts, and it's capable of uh, either set up for two basketball courts or two volleyball courts. Here's the volleyball, of course, you don't play them at the same time. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, the natural turf is, has been placed on all of the uh, ball fields. This is f uh, the five ball fields. Uh, with the one at the bottom is the soccer f um, softball field. In the top left-hand corner is the commons. And this is a spectator's view of the field. And this is uh, the walkway. One the walkway. This is the walkway between the two soccer fields. Note the shade structures and uh, very proud of the landscaping and uh, the landscape features that uh, that was designed into it. And this is the walkway in between the two ball fields. Uh, last month, they started uh, putting in the uh, synthetic turf of the soccer fields. Um, here, the turf has been installed, and they're putting in the uh, infill. And the shade structure is just beginning to be installed. Here's the rubber, the sand rubber infill that they're installing. And there it is, uh, as of last week. See, synthetic turf is installed. And then on top is the uh, sod uh, placed in into the commons. Another view of the soccer field. And this is the walkway leading into one of, one of nine picnic shelters. Note the, uh, f the flagstone paving. And this is the overlook looking, I believe, east. one of the hiking trails leading up the hill. I'm proud to say that uh, this is how the site looked three years ago. Uh, it was uh, Glass Creek in the center and to the right it would be the uh, El Toro materials. And this is how it looked last week. another view. And that concludes my presentation. Any questions? Uh, very quickly, is this presentation or something similar available on the website? Or could it be? It can be. I'd love to be able to share that with people. It's very impressive. Uh, where will the security cameras be located and what areas will they cover? I can't tell you that. That's secret. That's but there, there are nine <laughs> locations, though. <laughs> there are nine locations. Nine locations uh, located on the uh, field lighting okay. and inside the recreation building. Okay. All right. Thank you me. can tell others, just not Jerry, right? <laughs> I'm glad you didn't tell me because I don't want you to kill me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. All right, I think we're on to agenda item number three. Item three is a, a status update on the Shave Baker Ranch development, and Carrie Ty has a report uh, for you this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Hamilton and members of the Planning Commission. If I had known Angel was going to have all those pretty pictures, I would have included a a lot of pretty, pretty pictures too, but they are in, in your agenda packet. So, and Gail knows I have hundreds of pretty pictures of the uh, Baker Ranch development. So tonight, um, we've decided to provide you with a status update on what's been going on over at Baker Ranch. Um, we provided the commission with a similar status update earlier this year, and that was right before the model homes opened. That was in February. So what's happened since then? 
actually a lot. Uh, the model homes opened. There were six housing products and several neighborhood parks opened at the very same time so that they could be featured as part of the model tour. That was very well received and um, building permits continue to progress at a regular clip. As of last, week's, uh, last week there have been 30, 344 permits issued for the for sale homes and that's not including over at the apartment complexes that I'll talk about um, in a few seconds. And so um, along with the neighborhood parks, also the private recreation centers opened for the future Baker Ranch um, residents. And in, in May, uh, the Baker Ranch Community Park, which is that seven and a quarter acre public park off of Catalina there, that was formally dedicated to the city and opened. And it's got a soccer field, um, two tot lots, picnic areas, a basketball court, and if you've had the opportunity to visit, you know how spectacular some of the sunset views are from up there. Um, and also visible from up there, you may have seen phase two grading started. So if you look at, there's a map I included in your agenda packet, but inside the loop road, um, that whole area began grading. And also on the other side of Alton Parkway, that started as well. So that went on for a while. And two significant events happened as part of the grading operation. One was where the flood control improvements over by the Borrego Canyon Wash. Those are typically out of view of, of general public, but that was considered a very significant improvement and um, as part of this project, so we're happy to see the, that progress. And also the movement of dirt across Alton Parkway, I'm sure nobody missed that, but that, had a, that involved a six-week closure. Everything progressed on time. There was a very um, well-managed operation and Alton Parkway reopened on October 1st. And so right now, uh, as you drive down Alton Parkway, you can see that grading continues on both sides because all the dirt that needs to be moved across has been and they're working um, internally now. Now regarding the apartments, the, we do have two apartment complexes that are currently under construction. The first is Avalon, a 430 unit uh, market rate luxury apartment complex. If you haven't seen that, it's, it's gorgeous. And they opened first phase uh, for leasing just recently. And the other one is Arroyo, which is right next to it. It's a 189 unit affordable complex and they are looking at um, probably leasing in the beginning of next year. So they've got a ways to go. They are, they're, because of their nature, they're not opening up in phases like the, uh, like the market rate project. And so then what's coming up? So uh, the developer is currently in the planning stages for the future residential neighborhoods that will occur in the, the parts that you see grading right now. And as part of these planning efforts, uh, the, the developers are refining, refining some of the park and pedestrian amenities. One of the more significant additions, and we're really happy to announce this, um, and it's in your staff report, is the addition of a pedestrian bridge as an extension of the Central Linear Park across Alton Parkway. And that will connect the two sides of the the Baker Ranch community, and that's a great addition. Uh, another uh, addition is uh, some additional park space on the other side of Alton where the bridge landing will be, so that's the extension of the linear park. And also they're looking at um, enlarging some of the one of the neighborhood parks over there to add some private amenities, but retaining all of the uh, public amenities that previously were anticipated. So we're happy to see that, that the refinement's kind of, it, it's growing in amenities, and that, that's, a, that's happy news for us. In terms of future residential products, well, we're starting to see applications come in. Currently, we are looking at an application for a 164 townhome and motor court development. And that's on the vacant site next to the community park where you should be watching the sunset. Um, and that will uh, be coming to the Planning Commission in the coming months. Uh, there's also an application for a single family home neighborhood right now inside that loop area. But um, I think we hear that the bulk of the applications will be coming in next spring. And so it'll be a busy spring and summer, but that's what the Commission has to look forward to. So that concludes my status update at this point. I'm happy to entertain any questions or send you any pictures. And also uh, Bob Yoder from Shea Holmes is also in the audience in case you have any questions for him. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I just have a quick comment. Um, at Lake 2, we're developing or trying to develop a pickleball court, which we understand is one of the um, the newest and um, most exciting sports that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small tennis that seniors can play and 50 year olds can play and you don't get the whole back and everything but it's, it's booming all over the US and, um, and we've taken uh, one of our tennis courts and converted it to a pickleball like one has taken I think two of their courts and converted to pickleball so I was just going to throw that out there and maybe you guys that um, would like to look into pickleball um, 
because it's easier to do it now than later, and we're finding that to put a new court in that would make, keep our tennis players happy is, in, you know, it's, un, it's like seventy, eighty thousand dollars to convert something. So something to look into. Anyone else? Just a quick observation: uh, the Baker Ranch Community Park uh, is fabulous. My kids, I took them up there. Uh, kind of by accident. We had forgotten that Alton was closed and went that way and got sidetracked through the neighborhood and stopped to play at the park be to uh, uh, appease my kids who were thinking, Why, you don't know where you're going. Uh, so I played it off as a surprise. No, I'm taking you to the park. But uh, <laughs> um, but they were really impressed. Uh, they had a blast up there. And uh, I think it's a baseball field, not a soccer field. I could be wrong. Maybe it's both. I'm not sure. But there's definitely an infield there. So it's actually got an overlay, so it can be done for both. I think that's the one we had a grand opening two months ago. About? Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Great. Thank you very much. Three great reports. Any other comments, questions? The staff? All right, moving on to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion? I'll move to, present, uh, move to approve the uh, consent calendar as presented. I'll second. All right. Let's vote. Agenda item passes unanimously. Commissioner wasn't in attendance at a meeting. It's 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 common to abstain from voting on the minutes because because they weren't here. So, I guess I thought in one of our law studies you said it's not required that you abstain. But I'd be happy to abstain if the lawyer says to. All right. Well, let's let's. Uh, can you clear it off? And uh, is it all right if we vote again? All right. All right, agenda items passes 4 0 with Commissioner Fuentes abstaining. Which leads us to the public hearing items of tonight's agenda, agenda item number five. Do we have yes. a staff report? Yes, we do. This is an area plan amendment for the transfer of dwelling units uh, in the Shea Baker Ranch, and Carrie Tai has a report on this item as well. Thank you. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> um, okay, and so we I, so um, I can. This is actually a good segue. I can piggyback off of the um, the status report on the Baker Ranch development. So I had mentioned that the developer is currently in the planning stages of the future residential development. Now that the first phase is um, all site planned and under permitting, and uh, the Baker Ranch area plan divided the complete community into uh, 11 different planning areas, each of which had a maximum number of do, uh, permitted dwelling units. And the total number of permitted dwelling units within the Baker Ranch plan, or Baker Ranch, yeah, the Baker Ranch area plan is uh, 2,379. And so the from the six housing products that were constructed and also um, yeah, from, from those, there were there were some, if you look on the on table one, there were some surplus units that weren't constructed. In other words, the developer did not request the number of units uh, up to the maximum permitted within that uh, planning area. And now as they're moving into the, the second phase of site planning and planning for future neighborhoods, um, they're looking for the flexibility to recoup some of the permitted units that they didn't use. And this is a, so this is a request basically to transfer among several different uh, planning areas, taking the ones that were not used and increasing the ones that, um, increasing to certain ones, and then also looking at, there's some future planning areas that they're not thinking that they will use, and so they want to increase them in others. And so the table one kind of walks through that. I'm not going to read all the numbers. Um, 
this is a this is a process that was anticipated in the area plan because when that was approved it, it wasn't clear what the housing market was going to look for what types of products would be successful and because of that uh, the process for this coming back to Planning Commission was built into the area plan um, this does not increase the total number of dwelling units at, at 2379 Every single planning area is still within the number of units that fits in its respective general plan designation. And so with that, staff is recommending approval of the transfer of dwelling units between areas. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions of staff? All right. This is a public hearing. I'd like to open the public hearing. And if we have any speakers, you're limited to three minutes each. We appreciate anyone coming to speak f before us. Do we have any speakers? Okay. So we'll bring it back to the commission. Any comments? Additional questions of staff? I have no questions of staff. Uh, I think I was the only one on this. Body that uh, was involved in this when it first came down. Uh, I have no problems with this because it was anticipated, as you know, Carrie's already talked about. And um, I'm glad to see you using what you have. Mr. Fuentes. I have a question of the applicant. If you can just uh, state your name and city of residence and fill out a speaker card. Uh, Bob Yoder, San Clemente. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Yoder. I Hi. was just curious if, if the changes that we're seeing here tonight are the changes that you proposed when you first came in to, um, to make this change? Or did you adapt it for any kind of um, staff recommendations? But is this well, it's it's really just a refinement. I think the a couple of big things happened. One is the apartments actually uh, we achieved better densities than we thought. We achieved more units in the apartment area, uh, so we're really not growing. There's one remaining area or um, residential in 1A, which is this mixed use zone. Um, so because we used more in the apartment areas, we you know we're reallocating there um, the other kind of change is within the loop area that we haven't developed we we had um, one planning area that was kind of set it, with an overlay for 50 by 80 lots and um, because of the popularity of these smaller lot program and the, and the price point it hits frankly we've decided to kind of delete that and that increases the lot count there so in that loop area there's if you're familiar with the programs that are in the market toll has two larger lot bigger homes and there's two even bigger lot programs in that area so all that stayed the same we just kind of increased uh, this one and we felt there was just too many of the similar lot size. We had the same lot size in phase three. So it was really just kind of refinement adjusting to um, where the deepest part of the market is. Right now the deepest part of the market seems to be in the smaller lot detached. Uh, so, that's so you're it. happy with what we have before us? Before oh yeah. Us. yeah we're, Thank yeah, you. So. You stole my question. But that's all right. I like to get, let others go first. I was just, is there any other potential revisions that you would have, or I mean, it, we think we've kind of got it nailed down. We've got preliminary site plans on every area at this point, and so we're just kind of working to final numbers and final product. Um, the only area that I could see changing is um, potentially along the. Um, uh, in phase three at the north edge against our beautiful cement plant amenity um, we may you know we're still kind of playing with that and trying to figure out the best combination to put in there but I think within this unit count uh, we should be fine you know we were I didn't think we'd use all our units we're uh, and I think we're going to be pretty close we'll probably be within about 10 I think based on the different studies we have floating around um, it's really because the apartments uh, plotted a lot more efficiently, like I said, than, than we anticipated. So. Great. Any other questions? Since you're changing the densities in a couple of these areas, uh, how will that impact the traffic and the parking 
in those particular areas? Have you reconsidered what that might do to the traffic and the parking? Well, our parking, you know, is dictated by the product type. So um, we'll we'll um, generate the parking needed for the different uh, product types that we have. So that'll follow. That's just a factor. We have to factor that into our site planning. And we think these are so modest in terms of the change of of trip generation. I think anything within, you know, the, what we think of as the Baker Ranch, which is the for sale component, it's really modest. Like I said, the, I think the biggest individual change was um, additional units up in what we call 1A North, which is the two apartment communities. So we think it all fits well within the traffic parameters we had. And like I said, the parking, each area has to park, you know, on its own. So that kind of goes with the, the transfers. Anyone else? Uh, just a quick observation. When I first saw this agenda item, I thought um, kind of along the lines of the questions that Commissioner Ludden was just asking, I thought, well, um, are we trying to backdoor density changes? And when I saw the actual numbers, it was apparent that that's not the case. And so I have no problem at all with this. This is, looks like it's very, you know, pretty well defined. If there's no other comments, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to uh, move staff's recommendation and close the public hearing. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion to second. Any commission comments? I'll make one quick one. I think this is a great example of us being flexible, both staff and the commission, and uh, I totally support this, and I think this is, uh, this is how it should work. Anyone else? All right, let's vote. Congratulations, this item uh, passes unanimously. All right, and that leads us to agenda item number six. Do we have a staff report? Oh, we do, and in keeping with our theme tonight, we'll have Carrie uh, provide a staff report on this. <laughs> However, uh, Mr. David Belmer and uh, Mal Richardson, our assistant city attorney, are also here if you have any questions. With that, I'll turn it over to Carrie. Thank you. So um, I'm just going to preface this by saying um, I'm going to keep my presentation brief. There's a lot of detail in the staff report, but it, uh, we're always available to um, fill in any gaps um, after the oral presentation. Um, in 2008, the city entered into a development agreement with the Irvine Ranch Water District to guide the development of an 82-acre site that's actually right behind this um, office complex here. It's the site that, for those of you who've been in the city for a while, was owned by the Los Alisos Water District, and then IRWD acquired it as part of their merger with uh, the LAWD. The, the development agreement um, was executed in 2008 and included terms and provisions for the dedication of a civic center site. Um, in 2011, the Irvine Ranch Water District um, uh, provided the city with an IOD. It's an irrevocable offer of dedication, and then the, the city subsequently accepted the dedication of the civic center site in 2011. And it's a gross, site, a gross acre site of 11.9 acres with a 9 net acre of usable. In other words, you see a lot of sites where there's slope areas, and but the flat part is the usable part, and the development agreement designated those, those terms and provisions. The site's are lo located right alongside the Serrano Creek Trail, um, and if you were to look at it from the closest street, you'd probably peek through the barrier at the end of um, Indian Ocean Drive, and it's to your right. So because it's adjacent to the, it's downstream of development, and it's adjacent th to the trail, there's actually a drainage feature that runs through it. The site itself is rectangular in nature, but right through it, there's a little drainage feature. It conveys water from upstream through a culvert before meeting Serrano Creek up at the south end of the site. And as part of the um, ultimate grading operation for the for that site, the drainage feature would need to have to, needed to have been removed. And so um, that was all anticipated in the um, the grading concept that was approved in the area plan in 2012, along with the tentative track map, along with the environmental impact report. Shortly thereafter, and it, we learned that the Army Corps of Engineers had adopted a new 
document called the Special Area Management Plan for the San Diego Creek Watershed, and basically that designated among the that designated the Civic Center site among a lot of undeveloped land in the city as as what's called an uh, aquatic resource integrity area. And that created a pretty complex process for removal of any type of feature, including this drainage feature we're talking about here. And so the city and IRWD collaborated on options. You know, how could we simplify the process? And one of the options was to impact only a portion of that drainage feature. And that would allow us to qualify under a more simpler application process called the letter of permission. Well, not um, in the effort to avoid a portion of the site, obviously that net usable area had to change because all of a sudden you couldn't you couldn't achieve the same amount of flat land that previously was anticipated, and so the um, the city and IRWD discussed ways to to. I don't want to use the word mitigate, but solve that problem. And as an alternative, um, the, a conceptual site plan, which is included in your packet, was agreed upon. And that would change the shape of the usable area of the Civic Center site, but add a little more flat area using portions that were previously intended for the Indian Ocean Drive extension. And that would create a site with eight net usable acres. Uh, the city did run that by um, our, our architectural consulting firm to ensure that programming requirements that, that we had hoped for as part of the development of the Civic Center site could still be accommodated on that eight acres. And they did confirm that that is possible. And so in order for what's possible in real life to conform to the development agreement, um, we are bringing forth this development agreement amendment tonight to change the terms and provisions within the DA to reflect what, what can be accomplished. And that is <clears throat> to create um, an, an eight acre net usable site. Now. There, the, there are excerpts of the DA that were included in your packet are considered the relevant portions of that. So that pertains to the, the planning issue of the size and the location of the site. So the location primarily is not changing. It's kind of extending in one direction and it's changing shape on the south end. Um, there is, however, um, obviously uh, the greater scope of the development agreement. And um, Attorney Richardson, Mel, has included the entire DA amendment on your dais for review. And, and just so you know, the city council is ultimately will ultimately review and take action on the entirety of the DA amendment. But we've included that for your reference. And so the planning commission's action tonight will be forwarded to the council as a recommendation. So that concludes my presentation at this point, and um, the staff is here to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. If I may chime in just briefly. <clears throat> um, as Carrie mentioned, the Planning Commission is tasked with reviewing um, a discrete uh, component of the development agreement, and that is those, those, those issues that pertain to planning and land use. In this, in this case, it's the size and location of the, uh, the, the site. Um, that, that limitation is pursuant to both the government code and the local municipal code. Um, so the Planning Commission, uh, pursuant to state law, is tasked only with reviewing that discrete element of a development agreement and then recommending approval of those elements to the City Council, which then reviews the entire DA. I uh, provided the, the draft DA to you simply for reference, um, not for review of the entire thing. That, that, that would just be beyond our um, required review tonight, so I wanted to clarify that. Thank you. All right, any questions of staff? I'll chime in one. Um, in my review of the packet, it, it, in just my understanding, we're kind of like the continental divide of Orange County. The Santa Ana Regional Water Control Board is, the, uh, is this creek, the Serrano Creek. The Los Alisos Creek is San Diego. So I kind of think of us as the, but I heard you say something in your comments in your uh, presentation. I, I thought I heard you say uh, San Diego. Is that the, is that that uh, second to last paragraph on page four of nine during the process? Is that what you said for the San Diego Creek? Yes, that's correct, and it and it's the so it's the special area management plan for the San Diego Creek watershed and working upstream the watershed, 
it all drains into the back bay. And if you work upstream, you go San Diego Creek, and then at some point, Serrano Creek feeds into it. And then this site is adjacent to Serrano Creek, so this drainage feature feeds into Serrano Creek. And it's all part of the watershed. Watershed is basically like an imaginary bowl where all the water flows into one destination. And so we're all part of the San Diego Creek watershed. Okay, but I just wanted to make sure that's what you said, and you didn't say anything to the effect of the San Diego uh, Regional Water oh, Control Board. That's Yeah, it's very confusing. The San Diego Creek Watershed is within the Santa Ana Regional Water Control right. Area. Isn't that strange? Yeah. It is. So, no, that, that is what I said, is that yes. And then Aliso Creek does is in the San Diego Creek Watershed. Right. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I heard the right San Diego you, when you, you were saying it. Yes. In your staff report. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I'd like to open the public hearing. If any members of the audience, we know who you are, want to come forward and uh, speak before this item, you have three minutes. No speaker cards. All right. We'll bring it back to the commission. Any comments? Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Staff I'll recommendation. Second. All right, we have a motion. In a second, let's vote. Can I offer a quick uh, point? Oh, out? and close the public hearing. Would you like to amend your? Make a motion to close the public hearing. And motion to approve the staff recommendation as presented. All right. We'll we'll take another second. Second. All right. We have a motion in a second. Let's vote. All right. Passes unanimously. That leads us to director's comments. I only have a few brief comments this evening. I just wanted to remind the commission, we're getting towards the end of our year here. We actually have um, one meeting in November and am I right? one meeting in the month of December. So we have two meetings before Christmas. Um, the agendas right now are, are not uh, extremely heavy. We tend to be kind of lighter towards the end of the year. So that's what we anticipate. So just let us know if, if, if either of those dates uh, you won't be able to attend uh, the meeting. Um, so just a little reminder there. Thank you. And that leads us to the city attorney comments. I have no comments, Mr. Chairman. And brings it back to the commission. Anyone? I'd just like to thank Carrie for all of the work tonight, period. And I really think you should get on a plane and go on a vacation. I would suggest a road trip, staying off of those planes. She's getting Just planes. kidding. Just kidding. No. Um, it, it, I, I second. Great job tonight, Lou. Good to see you. And Mr. Belmer is once again in the audience. We had missed your smiling face. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll miss Director Ackerman from the next two meetings. Uh, Oh, you, you won't be here. That's why I said we'll miss you. No, I will be oh, here. Will be. I just want to let you know we only have one meeting a month. Oh, but okay. um, if you're not going to be here, let me know. Okay. And if, I w if I'm going to be gone, I'll let you know. Okay. That works. That works. No. Um, and with that, uh, remind everyone that uh, as a resident of this beautiful city, make sure that you get your ballots filled out and vote. We do have an election coming up, so that's an important one. And, uh, I, I, didn't, I missed what was that? Said, we have a what coming up? We have an election. Of course, I'm sure you don't know anything about it, but I know Ms. Uh, Commissioner Brower does. Anyway, don't forget to vote. November 4th. I'm not going to add anything to that. I just want to tell Carrie, thank you very much for a very nice presentation tonight. Very helpful. And Mr. Kirk, thank you for yours too. And uh, I want to ditto all the comments. Uh, thank you to staff for your uh, dedication and uh, staff reports tonight. And with that, we're adjourned. <laughs>